Okay, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, getters and how they're used in vacuum packaging and other types of packaging for MEMS uh, and sensors. Now, getters have been getters are basically a material that absorb a contaminant, kind of like a sponge. Typically, they're used to absorb reactive gas atoms in a vacuum chamber or maybe a, an inert gas. Um, sometimes you refer to getters even in solid. I know we had oxygen interstitial getters to absorb transition metals in silicon wafers. Now, I've worked with getters through most of my career, from grad school to doing my own startup called Nano Getters, uh, which was um, acquired by Materion. Um, you know, I ended up working probably with 50 to 60 companies at Nano Getters, uh, providing these reactive materials to packages, uh, to wafers um, in a variety of applications from gyros to infrared sensors to pressure sensors. Getters has a long, they have a long history. Actually, the first getters, I was doing a patent search on getters and I came up with one in the 1890s for the first light bulbs using phosphorus as a getter in the glass tubes to absorb background oxygen. Uh, it was uh, thin film, flash evaporated barium and other uh, easily evaporated getters were used in vacuum tubes, which was the backbone of electronics through the 1900s. Uh, they were used in uh, CRT, cathode ray tubes for televisions and um, test equipment. They've been used in particle accelerators like CERN, uses a lot of getters. And now, you know, in the last couple decades, they've been used in MIMS and sensors, a variety of sensors. Now there's a number of Micro machine or MEMS vacuum packaging options. You have the uh, welded TO can type of approach uh, where you can vacuum weld, and this is often used in pressure sensors, for example. Um, there's the ceramic uh, package, which typically is has a, a soldered lid, which can be a gold plated Kovar, it can be uh, glass, it can be germanium if it's an infrared device. Uh, and then you have wafer level packaging. So silicon, quartz, bow or float, any type of substrate material can be um, used as a vacuum package if you do wafer bonding or some sort of reactive CVD sealing. And in all of these, getters have been and can be used to improve the performance of the device by absorbing unwanted gases. This is just a plot that showed um, how the Q or the resonant peak of a of the MIMS uh, resonator was, in, you know, was improved or can be improved in vacuum. On the right is a, um, uh, a lab vacuum pump system like a bell jar, and as you lower pressure, the Q of the device, uh, you know, goes up. It starts in, you know, the the double digits, maybe 20, 30, goes up to 100. As you get to like one millitor you're maxing out in the tens of thousands for this particular really wide resonator. Um, I, I was at a, another startup where we had this huge resonator that they wanted to get high cues on. And if we, just looking at the, at the pressure plot in this lab system, I knew immediately we couldn't do it with traditional wafer bonding. With traditional wafer bonding, we got cues of about 30 to 40. And I was able to come up with a, a unique thin film getter process and we boosted you know, the cues up to 10 to 60,000. And so that's shown on the left. Now, depending on your sensor device application, you may have different vacuum level requirements. An accelerometer may just want slightly below atmospheric pressure because you want some damping. Uh, absolute pressure sensors, gyroscopes, RF switches, they want a little bit of gas in there to re reduce damping and maybe prevent oxidation of the contacts. Um, and then microbolometers and uh, infrared sensors are probably down there at the requiring the best vacuum packaging possible. Now you can use different types of getters. There are something called non-evaporable getters, which are typically pellets or strips. And Professor Asashi in the 1990s started using these with pressure sensors to demonstrate how getters could improve pressure sensor performance by lowering the reference vacuum pressure. Uh, a few years later, we started developing uh, thin film approaches at the wafer level. And um, this shows um, a process flow that I used with the nanogetter materials 
uh, in this in this case it was glass frit and you know it was integrated into the cap process that you bond to a, a resonating or some sort of MEMS device thin film getters can be patterned in a multiple different ways you can use shadow masks uh, if they're pretty big structures you can use liftoff um, you can even spray on liftoff if you have a fairly deep cavity and then you can use traditional photolithography and metal etch and there are certain metals that are easy to etch um, care has to be taken because some getters are sensitive to those type of chemicals being applied to them shadow masking is shown here uh, shadow masking has been used for uh, many years on covar lids for example or glass or silicon or germanium lids for infrared devices typically there's a square you know like a typical shadow mask you'll place those lids in there and then uh, evaporate or sputter the, uh, the, the material through the other side you can also do shadow masks for wafer bonding and this you know the couple of devices shown here we we used um, shadow masking for these pretty large cavities this was roughly a eight by eight millimeter chip so a pretty big chip um, vacuum bonding um, can be used and the getters can be patterned not only on the cap wafer but also on the device in the center picture shows a uh, kind of a t-shaped uh, getter deposition on the non-resonating part of uh, of a uh, Coriolis mass flow tube okay this cross section is um, a typical resonating device and it shows you how the thin film getter is integrated into uh, the wafer and the package into the vacuum package it's a thin film device deposited and patterned in the cavity uh, the the two wafers are pumped down in a bonder the uh, the seal material is reflowed or or you know bonded in some manner you may uh, bake or activate the getter after wafer bonding step and then some of the applications that um, I personally seen getters used in are shown below gyroscopes which of course resonate timing oscillators Coriolis mass flow chips resonant capacitive piezo-resistive pressure sensors f-bars atomic clocks quantum vapor cells uh, micro mirror arrays uh, infrared and x-ray sensors and then infrared uh, imaging arrays okay just in summary um, m2m technology can help you integrate a thin film getter or even an neg into your mems device uh, or into the wafer process we can help you with package integration, material selection, because there's a lot of different getter materials. Perhaps look at the IP space. There were many uh, thin film getter patents issued several decades ago. Some have expired, some have not. We can also talk to you about uh, design rules. And that again, depends on what type of patterning you're using and what type of materials. Uh, and then for example, we can also discuss the MEMS market and what type of devices are using thin film getters. So please contact us at this email or visit our M2M Technologies website. And finally, like and subscribe this channel. Thank you.